Greg Jovi, your first appearance at Stage 1 involved you distracting Bull Brady so that Brandon Espinosa could jump him from behind. Espinosa is an elite talent. Why was the distraction necessary? Yeah, you guys can talk all you want about how it was done, about how I went about it, how my team goes about things. We get the wins. That's all that matters. It doesn't matter why I do things. If I tell you why I do everything, everybody's going to be out there. Everybody else can be trying to be 5 and 1. We're all going to be 500 because everybody knows the secrets. I'm the only one that knows how to win this thing. That's why we're winning. I'm not going to tell you or any of those people out there that are just trying to get information about how I do my business. Your team was fined for a number of transgressions at Stage 1. So it seems clear to me that you're not in PWCS to fight a fair fight or even partake in healthy competition. So again, I ask, if you guys are so talented, if you are, are the franchise team, why are you taking so many shortcuts? You know, everybody out there wants to come and try and knock the king off their throne, right? They want to figure out some reason that we don't deserve to have the wins that we have. Take New England Patriots, Bill Belichick, greatest head coach of all time, all anybody ever talks about, the Spygate, the New Orleans Saints, everybody all, all they talk about is, is Bounty Gate. You know what? They've won. They won the Super Bowls. They won championships. That's exactly what we're doing here at the Ego Busters. You can come and you can knock down my tactics and you can try and figure out, oh, well, what's wrong with him? Why don't, why don't they deserve the wins? I don't care if we des you think we deserve it. I don't care if the people think we deserve it, the fans, the other teams. The fact is we have five wins to one loss and we don't deserve the one loss. You want to talk about something we don't deserve? It's that fluke loss that we have. We put in the work. We're the best. That's why we're number one. What makes you think it was a fluke? I mean... There was no distractions, there's no interference. Jojo Bravo beat Gary J one, two, three in the middle of the ring. Your number one draft pick. Beat your number one draft pick in the middle of the ring. There's no distractions. Their team leader and best friend was drowning two feet away from him outside the window. What are you talking about? I'm still drying my shoes out. No distractions. Did you see Jeremy Wyatt, the most stone faced man in the history of professional wrestling, is out there trying to save me with a ring? These men love me. For everybody that says that we're not a team, everybody that says that we're not a family, this is a family. The Ego Busters, the Ego Buster way, that's the way we do things. We all have each other's back. Gary J's mind was not in that wrestling ring, he was on that swimming pool with his best friend Greg Jovi. So going in the pool, that, that's your excuse. Going in the pool is why Gary J lost. Prof number one draft pick, prof top professional wrestler in St. Louis area, lost because you were in a swimming pool. First of all, you're the one telling, saying that he's the best, he's the number one guy. All of my guys are number one guys, okay? All of my guys are number one draft picks. Every other team would be dying to have them. They can't have them. That's why I have them. All right? And second of all, yes, there are distractions. And when there are distractions, such as a, a good friend and business partner drowning two feet away from you, your mind tends to go somewhere else. All right? So you can take him there. You can say he deserved it. You can say whatever. We'll figure it out. Okay? Because somewhere down the line, Gary J is going to get a piece of Jojo Bravo again, and he's going to tear him to pieces. All right. I'm going to back up a little bit. Um, we talked about the fines from Stage 1. I'm sure there are going to be some fines coming from Stage 2 as well. We all saw the powder in the eyes. Are you willing to disclose how much you were fined after stage one? My checkbook is none of you or any of these people's concern. You got that? All right? I got fined, yeah. I got, I'll probably get fined for stage two. Come at me. Lead, come at me. Let me know how much and I'll pay it. I'll keep paying them out. All right? Because I got the pockets to do it and I don't care. You come and do this. You do whatever you want. What are you going to do? Throw me in a wrestling jail? That ain't going to happen. Keep fining me. I'll we keep might throw you in another out. pool. <laughs> do you think that reflects poorly on you as a, as a minority shareholder then? Does that reflect poorly on the league that you have been fined so many times? I don't give a crap about this league's image. I'm in here to win. I'm in here to win. I got a little bit of piece of the action so I can make some money. The league's basically paying their own fines. They're lying in my pockets and I'm paying it right back to them in fines. So how do you like that? I feel like you're threatened by the blacklist. Um, going back again to stage one, you paid off Christian Rose to not show up you jumped Mikazi at the end of the night. We, we all saw what happened at stage two, again, with the powder, with the distractions. The blacklists were fed up. That's, that's why you went in the pool. But do you, are you threatened by Mikazi and his crew? First of all, let me address this whole situation where apparently powder was thrown in Nate Red Wing's eyes. All right? You understand? Uh, if I did something like that, shouldn't I be DQ'd in the match? 
Should not, should not be DQ. So the league, if they want to go to somebody, they want to say that I did this, which I don't believe you have any proof of, then you, if you want to come, you want to show some sort of grainy, nasty video, looks like I threw powder in his eyes, then you come at you come find me, you give me some BS fine, all right? But that has nothing to do with me, and the league is just out for my head. They know that. They don't want me out of here. They don't like that I'm a minority shareholder. They don't like that I'm dominating this, all right? And you and your blacklist, you get out of here, all right? I'm not even going to address that. There is no threat to the Ego Busters. The only threat is everybody else. They are all threatened by us. Heading into stage three, uh, every team actually has a mathematical chance to still still advance to the, the championship spectacular. Obviously, you think you deserve to be there. Who do you think deserves to be across the ring from you should you advance? Nobody deserves to be in the ring with the Eagle Busters. Are you insane? I'm about half ready to leave, but this is my office. I'm going to kick you out. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which one of these teams limp into the finals. We're going to be there fresh, number one, and ready. And we're going to take the championship that we deserve and get right on out of there, just like it's been the plan from day one. From back in February when we announced this whole organization, I knew that I was going to put together the best team and win the championship, and it's just the way that it's going to be. And if anybody out there doesn't think that that's going to happen, thinks that I'm threatened by people, then you come buy a ticket and you get your dreams crushed right there in Grand City, Illinois. All right, stage three, um, you're up against Team Anarchy, only team you haven't faced yet this season. Team Anarchy has struggled to find its identity, uh, seem to be struggling with some leadership, uh, some trust, distrust among, among members. How, how do you strategize, how do you game plan for a team that is in such disarray? The only reason that the team is in disarray is because of you people. Keep, keep keep coming in their locker room and shoving cameras in their face, and uh, yeah, they maybe should be able to handle it, I guess, a little bit better. But you know, they're all A class, A plus men over there. Pierre Abernathy, good man. You come and you make a joke out of him. That's ridiculous. All right, but I'm gonna meet one on one with with these guys in the ring, and we're gonna go toe to toe, and we're gonna take them down just like we do everybody else. They got a lot of talented folks on there. I'm not gonna lie. Fitch, it sounds like he's gonna be back. I guess if he's done playing retirement again for two or three times now. Davey Vega, if he could bother to show up, he'll be there, I guess. Submission squad, if you haven't jerked them around so much that they leave. I'll tell you, let me put it this way, all right? Team Anarchy, they're talented, but they're no ego busters, all right? There's no game plan. The game plan is walk in, leave the winners. That's it. That's all that matters. That's what we do every time. There's no there's no strategy to this. There's no secret. You guys keep coming here thinking I'm doing some sort of shenanigans, some sort of backstage plan. The secret is that we have the best wrestlers, the best talent, so we walk in, we knock them in the mouth, and we leave the winners. And that's exactly what we're going to do in October in Granite City, just like we've done the last two times, just like we're going to do with the championship, with whatever jokes you send in there against us. Gary J is going to knock them in the mouth. Brandon Espinosa is going to knock them in the mouth. Jeremy Wyatt's going to knock them in the mouth. All of them are going to get knocked in the mouth. That's exactly what happens, and then we win. And that's the, that's the way this story goes, folks. All right. Any parting comments? Parting comments. Get out of my office. Those are my parting comments. Get out of here. I got work to do. That's a good picture of me. That's also a good picture of me. Look at that. And mustache picture. Ah, are you still here? Get the hell out of here.